Hi all. Today we are going to discuss on the topic communications. So I will be detailing you about the definition of communication, then the functions of communication and different types of communications. So if I am asking you what is the definition of communications, basically all of you will be knowing the definition of communication as transferring a message from one person to another is known as communication. Yes, that is the basic definition, but we have different definitions which has been proposed by different persons. So we will just go through uh, three definitions of communications. That is the first one is that communication is a mechanism through which human relations exist and develop. That means you all know that human is a social animal. So to live in the society and to exist in the society in a very good manner, we need our communication level to be a little bit higher. So the second definition is that communication is a process by which one person tells other person something through written or spoken words. So communication can either be a written communication or can be a spoken communication. If I am writing a letter to uh, my father, then I am communicating all my messages through that letter and if I am sending a mail to the manager of the college then I am communicating whatever I want to communicate I am communicating through that mail so it can either be a written or spoken words then the last definition is that communication is a process of sharing of exchange of ideas information knowledge and then attitude and feeling so whatever we are communicating if if i am if i am crying in front of a person then i am communicating that i am sad so whatever everything there's all this i exchange of ideas information knowledge and attitudes everything is communication which comes under communication so that is the definition of communication so now we are moving on to the functions of communications so what are the functions of communications there are many functions but we'll just look for uh, four functions of communications. That is the first function is that education and instructions. So this education and instruction starts from our very childhood itself. Whatever our parents are teaching us, whatever our teachers are instructing us, all that things are, they are communicating to us. And this will provide us knowledge and expertise and skills for smooth functioning in the Public. So all these communication and the knowledge which, which we are getting from our parents and our teachers will help us to uh, live, a, a live in a better manner in the society. So that is uh, the first function of communication, education and instructions. So the next function is information. So information plays a very important role in our life. So a quality of our life will be poor without information. So how much information we are having, that much powerful we are. See, for example, uh, if we uh, doesn't know about the lockdown of tomorrow's lockdown and we are planning uh, for a picnic with our family. So what will happen? Obviously, the next day when we are going out, we will not be seeing any cars or any shops open and nothing. So what will happen? You will obviously have to wind up the picnic. So that is because of the lack of information. So uh, communication provides us a lot of information through uh, different channels like through television, through radio and through all these. Uh, and so it will be giving us information regarding what is happening in our surroundings. So that is the second function of communications. Now moving on to the third function of communication is entertainment. So entertainment is very much important in our daily life because uh, considering the students, you, know, you can say you are studying your daily chapters. If you are studying, then okay. Uh, studying daily chapters, doing your OJTs, going for internships. All these are your routines, uh, the things which you have compelled to do. And uh, when uh, compared to a teacher, the teacher has to teach. Then at times we have to take videos for you since it is an online class. So uh, all, all people are going through this routine life and sometimes it will become uh, very stressful uh, to, to us or to each one of you. So what you have to do is that we need some entertainment in between. Everybody needs some entertainment in between. So this communication provides us endless entertainment through all the channels, through television, through radio, through this uh, books, novels, whatever you are reading, Balarama, Kalikurka, whatever, or film magazine, which area you are interested in, all these books also are entertainment channel so television radio and all these are entertainment channels and also your whatsapp groups whatsapp instagram facebook all these provides uh, you entertainment so that is also a function of a communications so the last function is discussions when i'm telling you about discussion you all know that 
the discussions or the debates which your class teachers or, or your teachers are telling you to do or conduct in your classrooms. So what these debates and discussions will um, help, how they are helping. Because when we are conducting a debates or discussions, we are raising out our point and somebody else, our friends are also giving or adding some points about that topics. So your knowledge level increases. So debates and discussions clarify different viewpoints. So at that point of time, we will be able to understand the point of view of all the other people in the class. So that will be adding up your knowledge. So that is also a function of communication. So these are the different, some of the functions of communications. So nextly, we will be discussing about the different types of communications. So in the beginning, we will be uh, talking about the definition of communication that is exchanging uh, information from one person to another. But we have to know that we are passing through different levels of communication in our daily life. But actually, some of you are unaware about that. There are different types of communications. As you can see in the screen, the first one is, I'm sorry, the first one is intrapersonal communication, second one is interpersonal communication, third one group communication, fourth one mass communication and fifth one is non-verbal communications. So we'll just go through the uh, each communications differently. That is the first communication is intrapersonal communications. What do you mean by intrapersonal communications? Intrapersonal communication means the sender of the message and the receiver of the message will be a same person. That is, I am communicating to myself. I am sending messages to myself and the same person is receiving the message. That is, for example, uh, now I am taking uh, classes for you. This, this is a video class. So, um, by taking this class, at that moment of time, there are so many things which is going inside my mind. Whether the PPT is right, whether I am audible to you and there are so many things. That means, I am communicating to myself. And that, that is known as intrapersonal communication. The sender and the receiver will be the same persons. Nobody else is included in that communication process. So the next type of communication is interpersonal communications. That is a basic of all communication. That is transferring a message or information from one person to another. Only two people are involved in this interpersonal communications. It is a uh, so that is known as interpersonal communication. This is a universal form of communication that takes place between two individuals. And the next communication is group communications. Group communication is actually the extension of interpersonal communications, not intra. Interpersonal communications, extension of interpersonal communication is known as group communication. That means a person is communicating to more than one people. That is, or a group of people communicating to a group of people. In this group communications, the members in the, there, there will be a group of people included in this communication. That is more than two people included in this type of communications. That is known as group communications. A group actually means uh, people with uh, same goal uh, who uh, interact with one another to accomplish their goals. And they recognize each other and see themselves as part of the group. This is known as group communications. And next type of communications, uh, what do you mean by mass communications? Mass communication basically means uh, a mechanical device communicating to a mass audience, that is to a, a very large group of audience, that is mass media. This large group of audience is known as mass, med mass, uh, mass group. So any mechanical device that multiplies messages and takes it into a large number of people is known as mass communication. So you can take the examples of television, radio um, and this uh, Facebook and everything. So when uh, when we are watching the news channel, when I am sitting in my ha home and watching the news channel, I am receiving some uh, news from the channel and the same news is being received by many other people at the same time. So that news is being communicated to a mass audience. So that is known as mass communications and the last type of communication is known as non-verbal communications so in verbal communications we know that there is words the spoken words and there is a uh, uh, written words and everything is included in uh, verbal communication but non-verbal communication is something different it's just all our facial expressions we are communicating through our facial behavior kinesics through our body movements through our postures and gestures and then through our personal appearance clothing and proxemics all these comes under 
non-verbal communication. So what do you mean by this facial behavior? How we are communicating uh, with our facial behavior? See, when I am uh, when I am smiling, that means I should not have to tell you that I am happy. But when I am smiling like this, then you will be knowing that I am happy. And when I am crying, I should not need to tell you that, see, I am crying. I should not uh, need to tell that. But when you are seeing tears coming out of my eyes and I am sitting sad, then you will be able to understand that uh, that person is sad. So our facial behavior communicates. Our anger, the disgust, the happy feeling, the sad emotion, everything. Our face shows all these emotions and that will be communicated to the other persons. The next one is kinesics. Kinesics is the study of body movements. See, uh, when I am moving towards, see, I am walking towards the camera. But I should not need to tell you that I, walked, I have walked towards the camera. Yes. What did I do now? I turned. I turned around. So I should not need to tell you that. See people, see students, I have turned around. Huh? There is no need of telling that. But you, I have communicated to you through my body movement. So next is postures and gestures. So uh, about postures, the way we stand, the way we sit and the way we work, all these communicate our physical and emotional states. And about the gestures, whatever actions which I am showing you, see, I waved at you. See, whatever actions I am showing you, then I blinked at you. And all these actions uh, in, uh, includes this gesture. So all the postures and gestures, these all things communicate. Then, next about the personal appearance. Personal appearance is very important because when a person sees see us for the first time, see, a first impression is the best impressions and that plays a very important role uh, which strengthens our communications. Your appearance matters. And next one is clothing, same thing. But from the clothing itself, we will be able to, sometimes we will be able to understand the age group uh, or uh, kind of their attitudes or their um, uh, uh, color lights and everything. Then next one is proxemics. Proxemics is also a kind of non-verbal communications. Proxemics basically means the study of space. So when we are very close to a person, the intimate uh, space level is about to uh, eight, uh, actual contact to 18 inches. So when we are uh, talking to a stranger, maybe we'll be uh, when we are meeting a person for the first time, we'll be keeping a personal space of uh, about 4 feet to 12 feet. So uh, that is the study of proxemics from the space. From the space we are keeping itself, we will be able to understand that how close we are to that person. So all these comes under non-verbal communications. So uh, that's all about today's class. So we have discussed, I'm just summarizing, we have discussed about communication, the definitions of communications, then the functions of communications, and then we talked about the different types of communications. I hope you enjoyed and liked the class. See you in the next class. Thank you.